Hello, welcome to episode number 11 of an Italian knitting podcast. My name is Francesca and I'm an Italian knitter and I feel like at the beginning of every episode I'm still adjusting so hopefully I'm done. And today for you I have the usual finished objects, works in progress and a little bit of uh, acquisitions, not much but still fun to share what I've bought. Today I feel like my hair is what it is. I washed them and used one of those oils that you put on the on your hair and they're supposed to nourish them and make them look healthier and stuff like that. But every time I use one of those, my hair turns out a little bit greasy looking. So I really should get the hint that I'm putting in too much. But it seems like I keep forgetting. So you have to deal with this. I don't think you care. I think I've said it before that you're not here for hair content. You're here for knitting content. So let's start from the beginning. I am wearing my first and only finished object for this episode. And this is the Cecile top by Paula Strict or Suzanne Muller. And I quite like the pattern. It looks pretty similar to camisole number six from my favorite things knitwear. And it's a ribbed tank top style top. I don't think there's a lot of differences if you are familiar with the other pattern that I mentioned. I think this pattern uses a little bit of a thinner yarn so I went with this one I bought this pattern instead of the my favorite things knitwear one because this was already out and the other one wasn't at the time but also because this one I was able to use a fingering weight yarn and I thought that for the Italian summer this was more appropriate than um, two strands of fingering held together. I used Mandarin Petite. This doesn't look like anything to you, huh? It's like just a, a blank receipt almost, but um, it's meant to be the label. This is Sun's Garn Mandarin Petite and this is 100% cotton. And this is 100% also my favorite cotton yarn. Um, I've used Drops Saffron before and I feel like I used a couple of other 100% cotton yarns and those were a little bit like dry and stiff almost and this was lovely. I think I have nothing left. Let me check. Ikea bags for the win. This is everything that I have left but yes, I can attest and confirm that this is softer than probably all the other cotton yarns that I felt. Um, it almost feels like buttery and yeah, very pleasant to the touch. And the top is knitted top down. So I was able just to keep going uh, almost until I ran out. I always cast off a little bit sooner because I'm like, ooh, what if I'm doing the cast off and don't have enough to finish the cast off round so I just like start much sooner than I, what I could but anyway I don't have much left this is going into my scrap fingering weight yarn small bag and hopefully at some point I'll have enough to do something with it maybe just like a scrappy camisole or maybe something for my daughter I don't know I did enjoy the knit even though this has knits and pearls, it's ribbing. So you are in the round, but you do lots of knits and lots of pearls. Knits, pearls, and you go around. I mean, purling is not my favorite thing in the world, but um, I was happy to endure the purling to get like a, a very clean look, I think. I think it turned out a little bit shorter than what I would normally knit my tops. I anyway tuck in everything, so it doesn't really matter too much. But if I show you this, this is my belly button. Um, and I think I typically knit my tops a little bit longer. This time I kind of was running out of yarn. And so I kind of stopped and um, I don't know, I quite like this length. I would still tuck it in but this means that I don't need to tuck in lots of fabric. 
when I want to kind of tuck in the top. So I think it overall was a win-win situation. So I was able to use all the yarn and still get a good, a good length. And my size, which was an M small, used three balls of mandarin petite. And I'll put the price here on the screen because I forgot to check before recording. This top actually has a very similar shape in the front and in the back. However, the V is a little bit deeper in the front or what, what I'm wearing as the front right now and in the back is a little bit higher but I would say you can 100% switch it around so if you feel like, oh, this might be too scandalous for me you can use your, the back as your front and vice versa I think it would look very good as well Do I have anything else to say about this? I do not think I would love to hear from you if you've knit both the Cecile top and the camisole number six by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I would love to hear if you've noticed any differences in kind of fit and enjoyment of the knitting experience or of clarity of the pattern or anything like that. I might still want to knit the camisole number six just out of curiosity and kind of compare the two. I'm wearing a sports bra underneath, which is my default <laughs> uniform, and I feel like this top hides it completely. Like, I feel like you were able to see a little bit here, but not really. So, I feel like this is a bra proof top, especially if you're wearing like a less invasive bra. But even if you have like a sports bra, like I have, which has quite thick straps and a thick band here um, you should be good to go that's it moving on i have an almost finished object which i'll try on for you this is a cumulus tea by petit knit however this is a work in progress not technically a finished object because i finished everything other than the neckline so i've done the i cord here at the bottom and i've done the i cords at the sleeves however i've done an i cord here at the neckline but i ripped it out because i feel like this neckline is a little bit too big for my frame and my body and now that I'm looking in the phone here, maybe it's not that bad, but I don't know, I feel like it's a little bit too deep for me. Now I'm regretting the ripping back of the eye cord. My plans, I think, here are to do a ribbing so that I can close in the v-neck a little bit. Or I could do an eye cord, but with maybe some decreases so that the, the V kind of shrinks a little bit and it's not this deep. I don't know. So the issue here is that I've knit this shirt with Knitting for Olive Pure Silk and I've done another Cumulus tee before in Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino and so that was perfect, it fit beautifully. So by the time I went to cast this on, I'm like, I'm using the same brand, um, the yarn has the same metrage. I will not swatch. I think that's what went on in my mind. I actually don't remember making this conscious decision of not swatching, but this is probably what happened in my brain. Um, and so what happened is that this shirt came out a little bit bigger and looser than my previous one because the gauge is a little bit looser. I took my ruler today and measured and I think I have either one or two less stitches per 10 centimeters and so um, it is a little bit looser. I don't mind the kind of oversized look. Even the sleeves are, I think are a little bit longer technically but I quite like that especially if if you kind of wear it tucked it in, I think this is quite cute. The only thing is that I don't know if this is too, too much. So if you have suggestions, please let me know what you would do about the neckline. Actually, I know that Inga from Knitting Traditions did not put an eye cord in her 
cumulus tea and so she actually wears it this way like I'm showing you so without any kind of finishing around the neckline so that's also a possibility um, I think the main option I'm thinking about here is to maybe do a little bit of ribbing like a v-neck neckline but done with ribbing instead of with an i cord so that i can re so that i can reduce the openness and i actually done something similar in a t-shirt that i've knit in the past and so this is what i'm thinking about so like some ribbing with a v-neck here yeah maybe just a couple of centimeters of ribbing to kind of bring in the neckline if you have opinions they don't have to be strong opinions but like if you have opinions or suggestions on what to do with this type of neckline let me know as i mentioned before the yarn that i'm using i guess that i used but i might still use to do something about the neckline is knitting for olive uh, pure silk in the color plum rose and the only modification i've done is I did less decreases on the eye cord around the arms because in my previous cumulus T that I've done before, I did the proper number of decreases and the cinching here was too much, like it was quite tight. And so this time around, I left it a little bit looser by doing less decreases in the bind off. And I think it worked out well. I'm actually making another cumulus tea. This would be my third one in Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. So the same yarn and also the same needle size. So it's very likely, almost 100%, um, that this one will have the same issue as this one. I'm saying issue, but I should say maybe like the same outcome. Uh, meaning that this one also will probably be quite loose and relaxed and will have kind of the same deep v-neck as the one that I'm wearing right now. I might experiment and do like a ribbing here and an eye cord here for the neckline and see which one I like better, I don't know. Either way, this yarn is dreamy. It is, it is super, super soft and quite lightweight for kind of spring and maybe the summer nights. Um, so I would 100% recommend, and I actually have more in my stash that I've bought in the past to make camisoles and tops. And um, for my budget, it is worth to buy this as kind of a treat. It is somewhat more expensive than other yarns that I usually use, like drops, I think for me it's still a, a little bit of a special occasion yarn, but maybe every day is a special occasion, I don't know. I'm still <laughs> trying to figure out what actually is my budget when it comes to knitting and yarn, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm going with this. I have other two works in progress to show you. This is an episode very heavy on the works in progress and not really on the finished objects, but this is how knitting life goes. The one that I want to show you right now is the Peacock Tea by Lynette or Lynette Holm. And I'm knitting this as part of our knit along, which we called Lynette Along in honor of the designer. And when I say our knit along that would be me and Icy from Orson Knits and all the other people that are already joining. So this is kind of a shared, very, very chill knit along. We have an Instagram group that um, you can join if you want to and just send me a message on Instagram and I'll add you to the group. If you want to chat about knitting or your vacations or the yarns that you're using, and I chose to knit the peacock tee. This is a lace yoke pattern. It is quite cropped because I haven't finished knitting the body, but I think I can still try it on for you so that you can get a sense of how it looks like. I feel like if I stay in this position, you cannot even tell that this is not finished. So perfect. I could have pretended this was a finished object. Oops. So 
uh, as you can see, this is like a lace motif here. It has quite a high neck compared to what I usually wear, or what I usually knit, but I feel like it looks pretty good and elegant. And I've just knitted everything according to the pattern. I have not done any modifications. Actually, it's not true. I've done a twisted rib for the rib here and for the cuffs, and I will do the same for the bottom hem, but that's mostly because my ribbing is very sloppy, and so if I did the regular one by one ribbing, it would not have looked neat, and I wanted to have a nicer rib kind of closer to the pretty pattern on the yoke. I'm knitting this one in Sunnest Garn Linen and this is my favorite, current favorite I should say, summer yarn because it's so soft, so easy to work with while actually knitting. The fabric is pretty lightweight but still is considered a worsted weight yarn so it goes by pretty fast while you knit. For example, I've used, or oh, I'm using technically I think US 7 size needles, which I think is four and a half millimeters. So it is quite a, like a fast pace project. And I bought the yarn from Strick.it, which is a website that it's also offering a little discount for whoever participates in our knit along, but that's only available if you live in Italy. So if you order your yarn to an Italian address, so I'm not sure how many of you actually live close to me, but if you do, if you live in Italy, you can use the discount code LENIT15 for 15% off the linen. I found the same yarn on other non-Italian websites, so hopefully if you do want to get your hands on this specific um, yarn, you can find something around you. And I will leave all the information about the knit along in the description box below, the hashtag on Instagram is LenitaLong and you can already see a few projects posted there if you want to see what people are knitting. But Lene Home has a bajillion patterns that you would want to knit from. I think my second one will probably be another t-shirt but with a different design. She also has children's garments, a cardigan that looks stunning and very simple. So I think you'll find something that you like if you do want to join us. If you don't want to join us, I love you anyway. Anything else that I want to say? That I love this color. This is the official color that was in the pattern pictures. I feel like whenever I see the official pattern pictures, that's the color that my heart desires. It's difficult for me to picture that pattern in a different color. So I went with the official one. And I feel like blue is a difficult color for me to pick because in the winter time, especially, I always, always wear blue jeans. And so I feel like a blue shirt with blue jeans is a little bit too much, too, too uniform. But in the summertime, I have different color pants that I wear. I have like linen, kind of beigey one, I have green ones or black ones like I'm wearing today. And so I feel like blue could be good for a summer garment that I wear with shorts. And so I took the plunge and chose finally blue for a garment. I think I like the look of it. We'll see when it's finished. I feel like I'll just keep this one because you cannot really see, you cannot really tell what's happening here. So I'll just pretend that this is finished. The last work in progress that I have is a test knit, which is so, so, so fun. I know people have mixed feelings about test knitting or test knits in general. I feel like I love them. I really, really like test knitting. I feel like I do it for the community aspect because you're usually in an Instagram group or some sort of group chat. You can see other people's questions and photos where they're knitting, like what yarn they're working with. 
and I feel like also in the summertime lots of people are on vacation so you always I don't know get messages from people saying oh I'm knitting on the test knit on the beach I don't know it's very uplifting it's like the community thing right and I, I do like that but I also like having some sort of deadline it really motivates me to keep going and to finish the project so I'm a test knit proponent of the world like I approve test knits but if you kind of have an allergic reaction even with me talking about them I'm sorry but I'm test knitting these this is my in progress um, test knit and the pattern is called the Soho Top by Kydre and now I'm realizing that I do not know how to pronounce the designer name Kydre I'm so sorry oops I should have asked her that's fine hopefully she'll forgive me it's knitted in garter stitch which I don't think I've seen many other tops summer tops in garter stitch or just garments in general so the neckline is I think technically a boat neck and then the top will kind of go keep going a little bit it won't be cropped and I'm still missing an I-cord edge in the neckline and around the arms but you can already see this pretty line here on the sides to kind of give it a little bit of interest and I think maybe a little bit of structure too since this is quite stretchy gutter stitch that's it I mean this is still in progress so you cannot really see the beauty of the final result but hopefully by next episode you will because this is due at the beginning of august and so i think i'm on track to finish this one what do i want to say so the neckline shaping so up until the armholes is so so fun to knit it's a fun construction you do the straps you increase here around the armholes and um, you knit every row because you're knitting flat and so gutter stitch knitted flat is knit every row which is my favorite thing in the world the gutter stitch in the round is unfortunately for me um, a knit round and a purr round and so it's slightly less relaxing than knitting in the round but it's still pretty comparable and so i'm just having the time of my life kind of knitting on this and doing maybe other stuff at the same time being like watching my daughter or watching a video listening to something um, it's not super mindless because you still have stitches here at the sides where you need to be aware of what you're doing um, so I don't know it's a good balance of relaxation and a little bit of interest here and I'm using, again, the Sunness Garn Linen. So the same yarn that I'm using for the shirt I'm wearing. And I'm using US 7, which is four and a half millimeters for this knit as well. So same needle size. It produces a very drapey fabric and it's not see-through or anything, but it is kind of lightweight enough for the summer. So the pattern is not on Ravelry yet because we are still test knitting it. Um, but on Instagram, if you use Instagram, there's the hashtag Soho top and you can see other tops that have been finished or tops that are in progress like mine. And you, I feel like there's some very good color suggestions or just yarn suggestions in there. And I don't know, everyone's version is, is pretty good looking. So I might want to make more of this. So I'm using a worsted weight yarn, but the pattern actually calls for two strands of fingering. So if you have leftover fingering yarns, <laughs> you can hold them double and knit this pattern. I'm thinking I might do like stripes. So I feel like I could alternate one strand of leftover from maybe this, or this and two strands of fingering and maybe make a top that is striped. I feel like garter stitch lends itself well to stripes because they are kind of like 
they, they kind of like meld together. They're not like super stark, like stripes in stock in it. I feel like Garter makes the stripes a little bit more flowy. I don't know if that's just in my mind or if you know what I'm talking about, but we will see. I don't know, maybe I don't have lots of leftovers yet. What am I doing? Am I knitting? Um, I don't have lots of leftovers yet anyway to actually make a top. So this is just a, a dream knit for the future. But I feel like I do want to use the leftovers somehow. So this type of top I think could be a good choice. This was my last work in progress. I will put it away. I promise I will stop knitting on this. This is so addicting. And last section of this podcast is acquisitions. Technically, the Sundesgar and Line, both of these were acquisitions because I bought them in the span of time since my last episode. So these were both bought quite recently, but we talked about them already, so they're boring. The other yarn that I bought is Drops Bell. And actually I bought this as a dupe, more or less, of the Line because they have the same exact composition. So it's Line and other stuff. It's cotton, viscose and linen. And they both have the same composition. The bell is a bit thinner. So I think there are 10 more meters in 50 grams but I feel like that's pretty comparable. So maybe technically this is a DK and this is a worsted. I don't know, in my mind, DK and worsted are somewhat interchangeable. <laughs> don't quote me on that. But um, to the touch, I feel like the bell is a little bit stiffer, uh, but not by much. So I had very high hopes. This costs half of the price of the sunscreen, so this would be more cost effective for me. It's also easier to get a hold of because I have a store that is near me where this is sold in lots of different colors and so it would be smarter for me to like this one. And I'm thinking about the Ingrid top. Um, this is by Gregoria Fibers. Not to be confused by the Ingrid I think sweater or vest by Petit Nu. That's way too complicated for my likings. I'm thinking about the Ingrid top, which has eyelets here, not here, all over actually. And so I feel like it would be fun for the summer in a yellow color, but I'm not married to that pattern. I feel like I, I, it would be a good choice, but I could also do another one of the Soho top that I have in testing right now, I think. It would look pretty good too. Other than that, I bought some tools. I guess that's notions, maybe that's the technical term, but I bought um, a couple of extra needles for my interchangeable Chaibu set. I bought the US 2.5, which is three millimeter. This doesn't come as part of the set for some reason, so I had to buy it separately because there are quite a few summer patterns especially that call for three millimeter needle and sometimes I'm curious to swatch with these specific needle size and I've never had it so now I do and I have a US 6 or 4 millimeters because I've lost one of my needles in this size in the past I think I mentioned this in one of these episodes but not important and I bought like a couple of this is already empty because I'm using it, but a couple of red lace cables, which is so good. These, I think, are loved all across the knitting world, knitting podcast on Instagram, whatever. These are the cables that we all love. And I mentioned that Strip.it is offering a discount for Sandus Garlina for Italian buyers. And they also send uh, little handwritten cards in my orders and they included little labels that you can attach at the back of your clothes or your knitted garments and I, I really like that so I will put one on this shirt and I will put the other one on my test knit I think so cute and I think we're done for today I don't have anything else that I have in progress that I have not shown you 
and I am going on vacation this upcoming week and I'm very excited about that. I feel like I might finish a couple of these in progress things that I have and so we shall talk next time with a few more finished objects hopefully. If you want let me know if you have summer knits that are in progress or if you have acquired any fun yarn. I'm always on the hunt for more. I should not say that but yes. I hope you get to be on vacation during the summer, at least take a few days off and maybe enjoy your knitting or enjoy your family and friends and I will see you next time. Bye!